I believe you are going to walk in the power of God after you've listened to this session. You know, there is so much power available for Christians and we don't walk in it. But there's something that is going to change in your life today. I believe you're going to walk in the power of God. And if you are already walking in the power of God, I believe by listening to what I've got to say today, you're going to walk more in the power of God. Now, I do believe that these sessions can be long. You must just pause whenever you want or just download it and listen to it at your own time. Because I'm going to use some time and I'm going to just walk through this thing from cover to cover and get you to a place where your faith is stirred up, where you believe you qualify, where you believe that God loves you so much that He has given you the kingdom, He has given you the Holy Spirit, and you're going to walk in the power of God. You're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm going to hear your testimonies as you testify, um, and just email us on what God has done through your life after you've listened to this, how you see signs and wonders, how you see your children being healed, how you see your spouse being healed, how you see your family being healed, how your neighbor's lives is being changed because of the power of God that flows through you. Hallelujah. Man, that is so awesome. Now, the first thing that I want to say when it comes to healing the sick and walking in the power of God is that you should never measure your spirituality to the amount of miracles that happen in your life. <clears throat> and you can just pause right here and think of it and pray a prayer and say, Thank you God for this truth. Never measure your spirituality or who God is to how many miracles happen through your hands and in your life. A miracle is designed... To, to, to just bring a change in the life of the person who received the miracle. The reason why there's a miracle of healing cancer is to get the person with cancer healed. It's not there to say anything else. It's not there to prove to you that you are a man or a woman of God. The proof that you are a man or a woman of God is in the fact that the Holy Spirit indwells you, it's in the fact that Jesus died for you upon the cross, was resurrected as a human being, and that you believe on Him. That's your proof. Never make miracles your proof. Never make miracles the foundation of your self-worth. Because you will be disappointed. It's like Jesus went to His hometown, and there He could not do any mighty miracles because of the unbelief of the people. Because they just said, Oh, well, this is just a normal guy. We've known Him all the time. And if Jesus must have based his sonship and who he is and the love of the Father on the fact that the people did not get healed, he would have just been a failure. Now listen, you are who you are because God says it. You are not what you do and you are not what manifests through you when it comes to signs, wonders and miracles. Now there was a rich man um, and then, then there was the beggar Lazarus. And both of them died. There's a, there's a story like that in the Bible. Both of them died. The rich man went to hell and Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham. And there was a rich man in hell shouting to Abraham saying, Abraham, could you send Lazarus up out of the dead? Let him preach to my brothers that they should not come to this terrible place. Then Abraham answered them. And this is a key today for you that will give you peace always. He said, even if Abraham, even if Lazarus stand up out of the dead and preach them, they will still not believe. For if they cannot believe the law and Moses, they will not believe him as well. So, the law has got a greater power to bring a change in somebody's life than a miracle. Now listen to me. Don't think that miracles are going to get people saved. No, it's the message of God's grace the love of God, the message of the cross that people believe that brings salvation. A miracle does not bring salvation. Now, I don't say that a miracle has got no power in the lives of people. It does have power, but it's not a significant great power. The reason why I pray for the sick is only, there's only one reason, and that is to see that sick person healed. The reason why I've got miracles on our homepage is of this website is just so that people who are sick can see that God can heal people 
and that they can open their ears to the message of grace and healing that we preach in the healing school and then they can receive the miracle for themselves. That's the reason. I don't put those miracles on the uh, website or advertise miracles to say I am a man of God. I am a man of God because God says so. That's it. I don't have to have one miracle in my life to have that. So, settle this in your mind before we get into these teachings that doing miracles and walking in the power of God is not for selfish reasons. It's not there to prove who you are. It's towards the sick person because God wants him healed. Amen. Man, isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. So, um, with that in mind, I believe that you will be safe. And I know we're going to say a lot of things. And as we go through these things, always keep this in mind. I put this first because it's the most important. Never think that a miracle proves who you are. It proves who Jesus is. And another thing that I want to say, if you are a preacher and you're listening to this, never say, well, I'm going to do a miracle now. And now because this miracle has happened, it's a proof that my whole doctrine is correct. If you think that, you are a fool. Because the miracle is not a proof of what you've preached the whole service. A miracle is a proof of the doctrine that says by the stripes of Jesus, this person has been healed. So the fact that he gets healed only proves that by the stripes of Jesus, we have been made healed and that we have freely received and that we freely give. That's all that it proves. It doesn't prove that all your theology about the end times, all your theology about um, how you should fast and go through hard times and whatever to get God to do a miracle is the truth. It just says, by the stripes of Jesus we have been healed. That's the, it's only, the only proof that there is in a miracle is that by the stripes of Jesus we have been healed. So please, don't say that you're, you find your identity in the miracles that you do. And don't say that the doctrine you preach is correct because of the signs and the wonders that followed that. The Bible says God confirms His word of grace with signs, wonders and miracles. So it doesn't matter what you've preached. If there's a miracle, it only confirms the grace part of what you've said. All the law and wrong doctrine that you've preached in that is not confirmed by that miracle. And we must remember that God has got a compassion for the sick. And He will use anybody. He can use you. Hallelujah. I've seen so many people putting me on a pedestal because of signs, wonders and miracles. It's not supposed to be like that. You can do the same. Amen. Are you a believer? Answer this question in your heart. Are you a believer? Now if you are a believer, I want to read Mark 16 verse 17 to you. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So here we can see that the supernatural, speaking in tongues, laying hands on the sick, drinking something deadly, whatever it is, will not harm you. You will lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are the signs that will follow a believer. Now, do you know how many millions of believers are there on this planet? But what happened is, because of a law mentality and not identifying with Christ through the message of grace, people struggle to walk in the power of God. You can walk in the power of God today. Now, I want to testify out of my own life and what God has done in my life. I start to pray for the sick on the basis of Matthew chapter 10 from verse 5. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 10. And um, we're going to read this. Now, I didn't know anything about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I didn't know anything about the, the power of God in a teaching like what I'm teaching to you today. I just started to read the Bible from Matthew chapter 1 after I got saved. And about two weeks later, I got to Matthew chapter 10. I was just reading scripture over and over and over. And when I got to Matthew chapter 10, and this is where Jesus called these disciples, um, I, I just felt that I can do the same. And let's read what Jesus said. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, 
Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, you know, when I reached uh, um, the end of verse 8, I said, Lord, I'm also your disciple. I'm a Christian, I'm your disciple. You are teaching me. You are my Lord, I'm your disciple. And if you sent the twelve out and you gave them power to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, and you've given it to them freely, you've given it to me. And in the simplicity of that, I said, I'm your disciple. I believe in you, Lord. I went to the lady that works in her house and I said to her, go and find some of your friends that's sick. And he br- she brought the friends and I just prayed for them. I didn't even know how to pray. I just said, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, that you heal them. I thank you that you love them. I thank you that you heal them. I thank you that they are sick now. I bring them healing in Jesus' name. And all of them were healed. I never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit even. Well, so I thought, you know, or in the traditional way. You must pray in a tongue before you've got the power of God. If you are a believer, these signs shall follow you. If you are a believer, the power of God's in you. And my passion was to go and win the lost. You must remember, Jesus said to, the, to, to his disciples, he said, go and wait in the upper room, go and wait until you be endued with power from on high, and then you can go and preach the gospel. So he commanded them, he said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to everybody, but wait until you receive power. Then in Acts chapter 2, the power was poured out upon them. The reason why they waited in the upper room was because they wanted to preach the gospel. They were together in one accord. Now the one accord that they were in, they were in unity. The unity was not that they weren't fighting or weren't, disagreeing about certain things they were in unity about one thing we want to preach the gospel to the world amen now thank god that in Acts chapter 2 the gospel the, the holy spirit has already been poured out when i believed that jesus has given me power to heal the sick that power came upon me right there i didn't pray in tongues right away but there i went out and practiced the power that I believe has been given to me and it has been given. I laid my hands on the sick and they were healed. It's the same with you. Man, just close your eyes right now and say these words. I am a believer. Therefore, these signs shall follow me. I lay my hands upon the sick and they recover. I can raise the dead. I can cast out demons. For I am a believer. Freely I receive right now. And freely I can go and heal people right now. In Jesus name. Man, (laughs) I just feel I want to go and lay my hands on the sick right now. Maybe if you want to do it right now, just pause it right there. If you know your child's sick or somebody's sick in that house, go right now, lay your hands, and you'll see the power of God manifested. Now, you know, I'm just going to speak out of my heart and just what's in my heart. You know, when I got to university, then I've already received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I started to pray in tongues and all of that. And I was just, and still is today, fanatical when it comes to miracle signs and wonders. And I was walking... Um, on the university campus, and there was a dove that was busy dying. It was lying um, on the ground, and I took the dove, and I saw it dying. Couldn't fly, nothing. It was just like pulling over backwards, dying. And I just said, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be healed. And I just threw the dove into the air. Man, it came down like a rock and fell. I, I think by that time, the dove was dead, because I mean... It went up about 10 meters, three stories. I came down on a concrete slab. Then I took the dove again. I said, in the name of Jesus. And I just threw it in the air again. And it came down again. The third time I just say, in the name of Jesus, I threw it again. 
By that time, some people was already looking at me thinking, who's this freak? And the dove took off and flew and sat on top of a roof. Man, it's God's honest truth. This happened. Now, you might say, but Bertie, why are you saying this? Listen, if you receive the power of God, you can apply the power of God wherever you want. You have received it freely. You can go and give it to whoever and whatever you want. Um, the pastor of the church that we, that we uh, are at in, in Douglas, uh, he's got horses and he's got a very expensive Mary. And this Mary got an uh, incurable disease. I mean, horses die in days of this and there's no cure for it. And then he came to me and said, Bertie, this is my top Mary. Can you go and just pray for this horse? You know what? I took anointing oil. I went to the horse, I laid my hands upon that horse, and that horse was healed. It's still healed today. Amen. It was a miracle. We receive the power of God to establish the kingdom of God in this world. To just see the established kingdom, which is everywhere, manifesting. That's what God's got for you. Hallelujah. Let's just read it again. It says in verse 8, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, Cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Isn't that awesome? We have received. Now listen, this was even before the, 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 the disciples received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. They operated under the power of Jesus. It was just over there. Just on the word. Now in the New Testament, and they were still functioning under the old, we've got the Holy Spirit ourselves. We can walk like Jesus walked. It is yours. It's not for the super duper pastor. It's not just for Bertie Brits. The reason why I've got this and what will give me great joy is to see you do what I do and more. Hallelujah. God has anointed you. He's given you the power. You can do it. Let's just go to Mark chapter 16 verse 17 again. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Oh, hallelujah. If you're a believer, you've already qualified, you've already received the power to go and heal the sick. Amen. So you can go right now and lay your hands on the sick. Now, I went out and I started to preach the gospel. I started to, on the basis of what I preached to you today, pray for the sick. But then I, there was a time when I went to Prophet T.B. Joshua in Nigeria. Man, that is an awesome man of God. I don't know what you think about him. Um, you, could, you could have read a lot of stuff against him. But to me, he's an awesome man of God. I just received an understanding on how the supernatural works. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. And, you know, I've never shared this publicly. I've, there were some churches here and there where I shared a little bit of, on this. I remember in Zambia once I shared this. But it's such an honor for me to share basically the secret on how to get the sick healed. Which is, it was always a secret because it was, it was hidden. But now it's revealed. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we're just going to go to Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to see what Paul says about this and how he just walked in this power. Now, Paul was talking about the law and the fulfillment of the law. Now, Paul was giving the key on what he, how he gets into the power of God. Now, this is what he says. He says, but these things which were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yes, doubtless. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win, the, may win Christ or the anointed one and his anointing. So, what does he say? He says, I count the law way of thinking done, that I may gain the anointing. So never think you're going to walk in the true anointing of God by a law mentality. Don't try to walk in a law mentality when it comes to the anointing. Walk by grace. Now this is what he says. He says, I want to know, I'm going to count the law done, and that 
self-righteous way of by what I do I'll become. And what I'm going to do is I am going to win Christ and then I want to be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. So there's two things he says. says, I don't want to have my own righteousness because if I want to have my own righteousness, I'm not going to have the anointing. Then he says here, if I do have, uh, if I do count this law righteousness way done, I will gain the righteousness of God which was by the faith of Christ. Which I enter into by faith, of course. Then verse 10. All these things I do that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Now what he says here is very simple. He says, I don't want to walk by the law. I don't want to walk by my works obedience in order to walk by the power of God. I want to know faith righteousness, the righteousness which is by faith. Why? That I may win the anointing. It says Christ. The word Christ in the Greek there is anointing that I may win the anointing, that I may get the power of God in my life, which is by faith righteousness and not by works righteousness, that I may know Him only by grace and the message of faith righteousness will you know who God is. Otherwise you will not know who God is. You will not know anything about Him. I've seen so many law preachers coming up preaching a message. Man, they don't know God. Not that I want to badmouth them. I was one of them. I didn't know God. I thought I knew God. I knew what I had to do for God, but I didn't know God. I knew that I was, I mean, I was saved, but I didn't know the Savior. It's like I said to a friend of mine on the way to the studio here. I said to him, uh, we were speaking about salvation. I said, you know, there are many people that are saved. It's like somebody out in the ocean, busy drowning. The lifesaver comes with his rubber duck, his boat there, and he saves him. He takes him to the beach and the guy is saved. But he doesn't even know the name of the lifesaver. He doesn't know where the lifesaver lives. He doesn't know what the lifesaver likes. He doesn't know what type of person the lifesaver is. He doesn't know what music he, he likes. He knows nothing about the lifesaver, but he's saved. And there are many Christians today that are like that. You cannot know God unless you... Come to Him through the message of faith, righteousness, and grace. If you come with a law mentality, a sin consciousness, by by my obedience to scriptures, God's going to bless me mentality, you will never know who God is. And you will never taste the true anointing of God. Man, you will walk in the Old Testament glory. You will see signs, wonders, and miracles, but it will be Old Testament glory. You will not walk in the New Testament glory. And don't say that from a perspective of, I'm judging you or I'm against you. No, I don't say that. Man, God loves people. And I love people. I've been a law preacher for many years of my life. But thank God I've been preaching grace longer than what I've been preaching the law. Hallelujah. Now let's get back into what Paul says. And it's so important. He says, I count all things but loss. What things? What I am by the law, my own righteousness, that I'm blessed because I've obeyed this, I've tithed, I've done that, I've sown, I've obeyed here, I've got the sheer obedience and all. I count all that but done. I'm not going to be blessed because of all those things. It's good to have those things. It's not wrong. But that's not the foundation of my righteousness. I stand. I do those things because of my love for God. But the power of God that's in my life is based upon the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Says, I count all these things but done that I may win the Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, and be found in him. I count but done that I may win Christ, that I may be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that I may, uh, but that which is through the faith of Christ, that I, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, by me believing in what Christ has done. Why do I want this righteousness? He says, if I have got this righteousness, I will know Him. And I will know the power of His resurrection. Now what is the power of His resurrection? Let's go to Romans chapter 4. Paul was saying something here that's a key to walking in the power of God. Romans chapter 4 and verse 6. Sorry, Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. It says, 
Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. Now listen, this is a powerful key in walking in newness of life. He says here, remember what, what we just spoke about. Paul said, I want to know Him and the power of His resurrection by standing away from the law, but getting into faith righteousness. The power of His resurrection. Now it says here that Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of God. So what is the power of His resurrection that Paul was after? It was the glory of God. Hallelujah. So what Paul actually was saying was, I seek the anointing. I want the anointing to manifest in my life. I want the power of God to manifest in my life. How will I do that? Oh, I only want to study faith righteousness. I don't want to study the, what I must do for God in order for God to bless me. I want to study what Christ has done for me in order for me to walk in the power of God. I want to study His obedience on my behalf. I want to know His righteousness. Because the more I know His righteousness, the more I will know that word know there is experiential knowledge. The more I will come to the knowledge and the experience of Him and of His resurrection power. Now, Paul didn't want to know just any power. He wanted to know the power that takes you from death to life. That's the power that will be in the life of a Christian to raise the dead. So the, one of the keys to walk, or the key to walk into the resurrection power, raising the dead, is knowing the glory of God through the message of grace. Hallelujah. Let me put in other words, knowing who you are in Jesus Christ. That's the whole thing. Now, man, I believe it is such a powerful teaching that you will just find such a rest in your mind when you start to know that it's by the glory of God, by His righteousness, by what He's done and me tapping into that, that I will heal the sick. By your own power, you cannot attain unto these things. It is a gift from God. The power to heal is a gift from God that it's easy to walk by. Now, we're going to go through some complicated teaching because of the difficulty that is in the lives of people that came through wrong doctrine. So we're going to just, just correct some things and bring the how, bring it to you how easy it is to walk in the power of God. Amen. Now we are continuing with this in the next session.